In the previous lecture we discussed the first three direct acting adrenergic agonists, epinephrine, norepinephrine and isoproterenol. Today we'll continue and discuss the second part of the direct acting adrenergic agonists. So we're going to talk about dopamine, dobutamine, phenoldopam, oxymdazoline, xylomdazoline, phenylephrine, clonidine, albuterol and terbutaline, somitrol and formiterol, merbegrin. Let's discuss their actions, therapeutic uses, adverse effects and brand names. Some of them are non-selective and some others are selective agents. Don't worry about writing down, you'll find the lecture's PDF down in the description. Let's start. Dopamine, as we discussed before, is the immediate metabolic precursor of norepinephrine. It is found naturally in the CNS in the basal ganglia where it functions as a neurotransmitter, as well as in the adrenal medulla. It can activate alpha and beta adrenergic receptors, in addition to, D1 and D2 dopaminergic receptors. At low doses, it stimulates beta-1 cardiac receptors of the heart, having both positive inotropic and chronotropic effects. Whereas at higher doses, it causes vasoconstriction by activating alpha-1 receptors. D1 and D2 dopaminergic receptors occur in the peripheral mesenteric and renal vascular beds, where a binding of dopamine produces vasodilatation, thereby increasing blood flow to the kidneys and other viscera. D2 receptors are also found on presynaptic adrenergic neurons, where their activation increases norepinephrine release. Dopamine is the drug of choice for cardiogenic and septic shock and is given by continuous infusion. It raises blood pressure by stimulating beta-1 receptors in the heart to increase cardiac output and increase total peripheral resistance by acting on alpha-1 receptors on blood vessels. In addition, it enhances perfusion to the kidney, accordingly it enhances the glomerular filtration rate and causes diuresis. So, it is better than norepinephrine which diminishes blood supply to the kidney and may cause renal shutdown. It is also used to treat hypotension and severe heart failure. Dopamine is rapidly metabolized by MAO or COMD as it is a catecholamine. An overdose of dopamine produces the same effects as sympathetic stimulation. And it has some adverse effects such as nausea, hypertension, and arrhythmias. Dobutamine is a synthetic direct-acting catecholamine that is a beta-1 receptor agonist. So it increases heart rate and output. It increases cardiac output and does not significantly elevate oxygen demands of the myocardium, which is a major advantage over other sympathomimetic drugs. So it is used to increase cardiac output in acute heart failure, as well as for anotropic support after cardiac surgery. But it should be used with caution in atrial fibrillation, because it increases AV conduction. Phenoldopam is an agonist of peripheral dopamine D1 receptors. It is used as a rapid-acting vasodilator to treat severe hypertension in hospitalized patients, acting on coronary arteries, kidney arterioles, and mesenteric arteries. It has some adverse effects such as headache, flushing, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and tachycardia as a reflex to vasodilation. Oxymdazoline is a direct-acting synthetic adrenergic agonist that stimulates both alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. It is found as nasal spray decongestants, as well as in ophthalmic drops for the relief of redness of the eyes associated with swimming, colds, and contact lenses. Oxymdazoline directly stimulates alpha receptors on blood vessels supplying the nasal mucosa and conjunctiva, producing vasoconstriction and decreasing congestion. It is absorbed in the systemic circulation and may produce nervousness, headaches, and trouble sleeping. Local irritation and sneezing may occur with intranasal administration. Rebound congestion and dependence are observed with long-term use. Xylomtazoline is an alpha adrenergic agonist. It is used directly in the nose as a spray or drops to improve symptoms of nasal congestion, allergic rhinitis, and sinusitis. Side effects include trouble sleeping, irritation of the nose, nausea, and headache. Long-term use is not recommended due to rebound congestion and dependence. 
Phenylephrine is a direct-acting synthetic adrenergic drug, that binds primarily to alpha-1 receptors. So it is a vasoconstrictor that raises both systolic and diastolic blood pressures. It acts as a nasal decongestant when applied topically or taken orally. Large doses can cause hypertensive headache and cardiac irregularities. Clonidine is an alpha-2 agonist, decreasing sympathetic outflow, so it is used for the treatment of hypertension. It can also be used to minimize the symptoms that accompany withdrawal from opiates, tobacco smoking, and benzodiazepines. The most common side effects of clonidine are lethargy, sedation, constipation, and xerostomia. Abrupt discontinuance must be avoided to prevent a rebound hypertension. Albuterol or also known as salbutamol, and terbutaline, are short-acting beta-2 agonists, used primarily as bronchodilators and administered by a meter dose inhaler. Albuterol is the short-acting beta-2 agonist of choice for the management of acute asthma symptoms. Somitrol and formitrol are long-acting beta-2 agonists. A single dose by a meter dose inhalation device, such as a dry powder inhaler, provides sustained bronchodilation over 12 hours, compared with less than 3 hours for albuterol. These agents are usually combined with a corticosteroid to produce the highest effect. Somitrol and formitrol are the agents of choice for treating nocturnal asthma in symptomatic patients taking other asthma medications. Merbigarin is a beta-3 agonist that relaxes sedetras or smooth muscle and increases bladder capacity. It is used for patients with overactive bladder. That's all for this video, if that was useful for you please leave like or comment. In the upcoming lecture we'll discuss the indirect acting and mixed action adrenergic agonists, so subscribe if it's your first time here, and keep following us.